built. Awesome. So who's been here for the last workshop on flows? Some of you, but not all. That is amazing. So we will be doing something different today, but before everything else, a few introductions. This is Daniel. Yeah, right. Um, my name is Daniel Stange. I'm a user group co-leader in Frankfurt, uh, Germany. Uh, I work as a technical architect for DRD Interactive. Um, I'm in the Salesforce ecosystem for about five years. And I learned everything from scratch, right? I used to be a historian in the past, <laughs> and I turned into a Salesforce technical architect within around five years. Well, that's been a journey. Um, at the end of this journey, I'm going to trip over this cable this morning. <laughs> so that's probably the whole story. And that's Christian Sandoknap. Hello, everyone. I'm Christian Sandoknap. I work with Apero and ISV in Munich. My job title is Head of Salesforce Development. I have a very similar background to Daniel, so I studied literature and philosophy and then swapped over to the platform and I just love the stuff that I learned since then. So what's going to happen today? We'll be doing something different. Half of this course will be you working on whatever you want to build and us two supporting you, going around, going, looking at your code, doing stuff. We will start out with a little bit of presentation so you get an idea what you can build, what you can aim for, and as we already told you, uh, it's about, similarly as in the last workshop, it's about putting lighting components and flows and find easy ways as non-technical person, as non-developer persons, to visually spice them up. Um, what? Is it working? Ha, 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 it's not working. I'm sorry. Hang on. It's, uh, should be? No, please, next slide. Okay. So we want to wow people, right? And that's our first goal. And we will talk a little bit why should we wow people. And then we will give you our assessment of when to use flow and when not to use flow. We are pretty opinionated about that. Um, there are, in comparison to classic, a lot of simple wows you can use in Lightning Experience that took a lot more time than before. And we will then dig into how can you go and find visual appealing HTML snippets around the internet and use them in the flow in order to illustrate certain business affairs in an appealing manner. Just so, Why do you actually want to wow people at all? Well, that's a rhetorical question. It's always nicer to have your CRM look a bit fancy so that it's fun to work, right? Why do you want to wow people? Because they're people. They're oh, humans, yes. Oh, yes. right? So what stops me to do a little flow with a little lies, something that we'll show you later on, and pop it up for a user who has birthday is today? Right? That's, that's a humane thing to do, and the user will be happy, and it's not a lot of work for us. It's 20 minutes in this workshop, and that's where we will get started. So wowing people and surprising them is a good thing as long as you don't overwhelm them, right? So be, be consistent in what you do, but also try to experiment. For this workshop, we cannot just be consistent, but also be a bit silly, but yeah. later on for that. So next thing is actually when to flow or not to flow. Um, I kind of have a developer background, so I tend to do everything in code. That's not exactly true for, uh, for Sander. We've been arguing from time to time how and why to do this and that, or this, do this and that, except uh, and don't do other things. Um, a good idea. And a good idea to use uh, flow is actually when you actually uh, need a screen and capture something, so um, you get user input. So screen flows are really cool. Screen flows turn to be mobile friendly just now. Um, and whenever you try to aggregate something and display something to your users, it's pretty easy to do that in flow because everything is built in. Same goes for um, sim uh, for decision trees. Whenever you want to create a wizard and react to the data people get, uh, pass it for you. Um, that's really great. And whenever something is triggered from the UI, if you push a button or so, flows are the way to go because it's just easy to build that component and don't maintain the code for that. Who's uh, using the Salesforce app in their environment? So who's using Salesforce mobile? Anyone? Right, because that's a great asset. Those screen flows are mobile friendly. If you build them on the record page and add them on the mobile app, 
they will fit and work and look good without you know, doing anything. So that's a huge asset that you get with flows that you don't get as easily with uh, custom coded components, for example. Now, this is our examples of how we want to use flows, and we also have an opinion when not to use flows, right? And as I said, we're opinionated, so uh, please make up your mind yourselves. But we think here that bulkification at the moment still has some issues, CPU time-wise or uh, chaos-wise in the sense of, oh, what happened there, I don't know, because it's too confusing. Um, flows or process builder has just one context, which is do something after the record has been updated. That might be not enough for complex scenarios we ha where you have to have more context. Think of triggers like before insert or after insert. That's not available in Flow. And if there's no screen involved, I personally wouldn't use Flow, but rather use a code or whatever other automation there is. Right. Any questions so far? Yes. Yes, it is. So the question was, if I'm an administrator, I can't code, should I be using Flow? Yes, you should be. It is something that has to do with the complexity of the org, uh, the complexity of the amounts of data you need to move. And obviously, Flow and Process Builder, or the combination thereof, is awesome for admins who do not know to code. Um, and it works until it doesn't. And that's the thing, right? That's, that's the scaling issue here. And um, yeah. That's why we, we try to avoid that, and we won't be doing a lot of record things today. We will focus on visualizing stuff in flows. And we would like the next slide, please. None of this just gone away anyway, so. <laughs> so actually, there, there are, are a few gotchas if you want to start um, using flows in the way we tend to use them. And the first thing is that you have to switch on the flow runtime engine. Um, uh, the Lightning uh, runtime engine, so that you get the fancy UI to your flow. Otherwise, if you don't switch it on, Lightning components won't be available, and the flow will look a bit like 2016 or so, uh, 28, whenever it was introduced. Um, next thing is, running flows requires a user permission, so make sure that you, um, if you want to roll out flows, especially in screen components, make sure that your users have to run flow permission for that. And um, another tricky thing is actually how to, uh, how to react to changes that you make to data and make the flow call back to the record and refresh the page. It works in some contexts. In some contexts, it needs a hack. Um, we have that documented, so you can read it up. Um, but know that your record won't immediately change automatically in some circumstances. So basically, what we're saying is, OK, you're using a flow on a record page, you click the update button, and you would assume that the real opportunity, let's say it's an opportunity, would get updated, and then you see the new value. That is not always the case, right? It depends what you're doing. And we will now take a step back and talk a little bit about the simple uh, wows, um, because we all, as administrators, wanted to, to, to enhance classic UI from, from the very beginning, right? And the question is how much work was it actually to um, do something in classic, right? So the idea is I have a formula field or I want something imagey or an icon in my related list. And the, 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 you know, maybe you visit a talk from Daniel and Mai, we always like to play a game, which is yeah. how many clicks do you need, right? So how many clicks do you need to display an image on a record, on a record conditionally, on a record conditionally and looking well placed in Salesforce Classic? The answer is a lot. Because you need to find the images, you need to upload them as static resources, you need to reference them in formula fields using the proper functions, and then you can add them to the page layout, yeah. right? And now the question is, how many clicks and steps do you need for the same thing in Lightning Experience? Three, if I'm in the app builder, I can put a rich text component on my app page. I can copy and paste any image from the internet into the rich text component and display it conditionally on the lightning page. Yeah, that's as easy as it is. One thing about security, 
<laughs> the images you paste as rich into rich text components end up on the Google Images servers, and those links are not protected. So if anybody should know the link to this particular image, mm. they're available. So if yeah. you have some very, very, very serious data, yeah. do not use this because it's not really protected. Yeah. Right. OK, that's about the things that we can do in Lighting Experience. And we'll give you a demo a little bit shorter. And we're looking at the time because we want you to start and start and get building. And how do we do that? So the first thing we have to do um, is as Chris showed before, and the, uh, the people who actually saw this session um, saw, uh, know, the, know the deal, um, we have to get our components ready to, uh, we have to build a component, point Oops. one. Yeah. Next point, this component has to know where it should appear. And there's the, um, you can click a lot of these things, and if you look closely, none of these options actually says flows. Okay, damn, what are we going to do now? Um, you just have to copy and paste that stuff. Um, uh, we have prepared a wiki for you. The, the skeleton of a Lightning component for flows is actually saying implements Lightning available for flow screens. That pretty much does what it says. It makes the component available for flow screens. Um, and you also need a display value. You will find that in all the examples that we say, um, bring. Because for our easy advanced flows, it's not just about surfacing images. We're going to surface something from, the, uh, from your org. And that's where you need that display value to tell the component there's something coming out of that component. Another setup is concerned about the design file. Again, please do not try to understand it if you don't want to. We can talk about it a lot, but that's yeah. not the thing. We just want to offer you the skeleton. You need to get started right away. It's not about understanding the whole arc programming model of Aura components. It's just the first steps that you need to do. And as soon as you're done, you're basically already um, capable of putting your flow onto a record page and display that specific value, for example. Um, I think we should swap into demo mode now and give you an idea what you can and how you can take it from here and how we will get this workstop started. We have about 25 minutes left. That's right. And basically, we've prepared everything for you up here. Right? Uh, you have a complete GitHub repo and a complete wiki with several exercises that go through step by step. It's don't get stressed out, don't get panicked. We tell you a little bit, you do as much as you want, you take home the repository and work on it on your own time. Right? And Daniel and myself will support you should anything yeah. come up or happen and, and so on. Daniel, would you give us a little tour of what we, we build as an idea. And the idea is, okay, we are not web designers, we're not CSS artists, we still can find stuff on the internet that way you can use in our Salesforce work. And now for the demo part and then for your building part. Yes, sure. So um, take, um, take note of this. I just close the, um, the slide here and jump over to the wiki. So. We started in the wiki to, um, to describe how you actually build the, the basic component uh, that surfaces something. Um, this is the step that we just passed, and um, let's go into the org and look what, the, uh, what we have here. Oh, there's, the, um, there's a fancy thing already. Um, let's look at one of these opportunities. Um, Looks good. Please change to proposal price quotes. Oops. Um, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't be nice to have something like uh, in here that shows how many cases, etc., are open. That is, that's a nice idea. So that's a, 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 sweet, a really sweet thing that Sando prepared for us here is offering a component that we could uh, place on the... Um, oh, I think it's already there, Daniel. You just need to move the opportunity stages. Oops. Oh, wrong tab, wrong tab, right tab, right. Oh. Just go to proposal price quote and please, from there. Please note that I was the one joking, Chris, <laughs> just a, an hour ago that it, there's no pressure in running a demo live for 50 <laughs> people or so. Um, there we go. Let's, let's inspect the page to see what's going on. Uh, 
as you see, many, many ro uh, roads lead to Rome. You could have clicked just the uh, gear button and <laughs> click edit page. <laughs> That's okay. So we see a few screen flows here that all so are... There's, uh, there's something hidden in the page that we didn't see currently. So there's a signpost, actually. There's uh, another component and another component and another component. So obviously, we need to change something on the record so, uh, to, um, to get it running. How about... <laughs> yeah, he's not doing a lot of lightning experience, I know. We're going to win this. I could have clicked the path, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and nothing happens. Great. Demo broken. I love it. <laughs> really nice. <laughs> okay, what Why is, is it? this? What did we do, Daniel? It's that uh, activated, please. Maybe we aren't on the right record page. Assign as org default, right. So the thing that you have to do about um, record pages, if you want to use them, is save and activate for the org. Um, so obviously, when you're uh, working with scratch orgs, you have to run through the same routine always and over again, um, or you put this in the org settings. Uh, so let me let me see if it's uh, after it's activated. Right. There is a fancy little, not really cool <laughs> component there. But that's the learning you take here, um, right? We're taking stuff from the internet and try to fit it into our record page. Yeah. And the idea is not you will you need to learn CSS and do an if it doesn't fit or doesn't work for you, throw it away, try something else. That's yeah. the basic idea. Yeah. And if you get into this experimental mind of frame, you will get successful. Right? Yeah. Just don't fret about if it doesn't look right the first yeah. time, just look for another uh, yeah. template. And if you go to a Clost Lost now, for example, you will see um, the the image of the little bander bear. Um, or if you go to, yeah, close lost, right? Um, all the stuff, oh. oh, right? And if you go to negotiation, oh, proposal price quote, please, and then negotiation and review. Yeah, awesome, right? The idea is always you have some data you want to visualize for your users in some way so that you get a quick idea about this. This is the component telling you, okay, in our proposal price quote stage, we should have a close look on open cases lest we endanger the deal, yeah. right? So and if you go to negotiation review, then you will get another component telling you, okay, um, this is how things look like for, for this particular account. And all the visuals you see here, we didn't think them, we just found them on the internet. Yeah. And put them in the flow according to the wiki, which you can be basically need to start building yeah. right now. We've got 20 minutes left. Is everyone on the wiki? Is everyone on the GitHub page? There is a deploy to Salesforce button. If you use that, you get all the components we've prepared already uh, into your org. Please use a dev org or a sandbox. Do not use production orgs. Thank you. Yeah. And be creative. That's all we want to share for today uh, is the wiki and you creating Lightning components via Developer Console yeah. as somebody who doesn't usually do code, but with our step-by-step -step guide, you will be able to do the same stuff in a few minutes yeah. that we just try to showcase. Yeah. The fun thing that you saw in the demo uh, examples that we brought, we have the bear that hugs you in the closed loss stage. That's, That's just basically a copy-paste copy image from, from the internet. That is a rich text component, no yeah. flow whatsoever. Just copy and paste and do uh, a visibility uh, filtering on the record page. So, next step was the signpost. The signpost is actually copy and paste, but it displays a value. Next step was the um, the, um, the negotiation or the the proposal. The proposal showed the number of cases open for that account and exactly the, the escalated cases. Remember that needs code or flow, flow. but fl and flow can survey give us back the number. So that actually brought values from the flow into the the component. And the next step was calculating something in the flow for that component so that we can have that. Um, a ratio rather than a real number of cases in here. That's the progression that we can take, um, make it even more complicated, make it, and it's fairly, the, the means are fairly easy, but the steps are just bring something up. If it f good, looks good for you, go ahead with that, play with that, 
enhance it. If it isn't good, throw it away, take something else. Um, one thing that you, um, that you might find helpful is go to, um, go to pages like CodePen. I'll just um, open in another, um, another pod that we built. Basically, all of our examples are somehow stolen from CodePen. Right? That was our primary source. Um, the important thing is you need to focus on component that consists only of HTML and CSS. And as you can see in the wiki, you need to um, handle CSS with a certain, um, certain uh, way of, of, of yeah, copying over, but that's all explained in the wiki. And as you see, that's exactly this thingy here, right? Um, the picnic table signpost. And we just copied it over from CodePen and put it in our flow and are happy. And obviously you saw it bleeded out of our component. Now that is something that you can like or dislike, right? You can obviously make the signpost smaller, no worries. If you struggle with that, we'll help you. This is our fanciest thingy, uh, CSS-wise. That's the glowing um, uh, um, uh, construction side lamp. Just to show you, you don't need to use images or so on. With, with modern HTML and CSS, you can even do animations. And that means those animations can also be part of your flows, like blinking, for example. OK. So the key part from going uh, transitioning over from something that you found on the internet to something that you find in your org is actually get this CSS and this HTML and find the matching places in, in your component. The this is the final product, and you actually see we have the boilerplate that we showed you already, and um, we just pasted in the stuff that we found on the internet um, and placed something that is the attribute into uh, a, play, uh, a place between that signpost. So where we actually found the, the stuff here, took it over, and pasted it just here. Replace this hard-coded um, values. Uh, well, you no S, please. And that's basically it. Um, we made a minor adjustment. If you look really closely, there's, um, there's a tag around it. Um, it's spanned in this uh, place. Um, it's a decision uh, that you have to make. But actually, this thing helps keeping stuff together. If it can be a span, it can be a diff, depending on the content. But the important thing is you need to have this. This thing actually tells it there's going to be a line of text to come, and we put some decoration around it. If it's some larger or complex object, it's a diff. So first thing you have to do is to wrap everything that you see into something that holds this thing together. That's important for later. Most things fall apart if you don't wrap it in uh, properly. Next thing is the formatting that you have to put in there. Um, you'll see a lot of CSS in here. And again, don't care about it, right? Just copy it over and try it out on your record page. Be experimental. It's your developer org, it's your sandbox org. You can try yourself out. Don't be afraid to learn, OK, it doesn't work. Then try something new. The place for CSS in a Lightning component is, the, um, is styles. So you can cl uh, just click down here and um, create, uh, recreate the styles. I prepared the, all of that. And you find a little difference in in the styles as compared to we saw before. And this is this simple word. This is actually, um, you have to prepend every style that you put in your component with this. And it actually means for the place where you're sitting in, format it that way, this yeah, way. But Basically, again, just copy it over. Don't think too much about it. This is something very our component specific. We couldn't do this workshop with Lightning Web Components because as of summer 19, those are not yet supported for flow screens, right? In them, those CSS stuff gets even easier, a lot easier. And, um, but for now, we need just to prepend stuff with this, 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 this weird this. Yeah. yeah. 
That's about like it. here. Um, there, you will always uh, often find things like HTML or body uh, at the very beginning. Throw it away. It's just throw it away. Yeah. It, it does, uh, you don't need it because you don't want to format all of your page. You want to just format your component. So first thing, we're getting, having some courage here and um, just discard this. And now we go this post. Next. Uh, you got a, 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 no, no, you need a dot, not a comma. Yeah. Like this. And then and you prepend it. This. And this. And this. There we are. It was pretty easy. Let's see if it still works. Yeah, so the idea is always to get a static value and put it somewhere into some HTML that visualizes a little better for your, for your end users what you mean. And as we see, we, yeah, you did something else, didn't you? You will break those stuff yeah. constantly, which is okay. Again, it's just about trying yourself out. It's yeah. not about being the perfect web developer here. That's what, uh, that's what happening actually. Um, it's actually pretty easy to fix, but um, if you uh, happen to see something like this, throw it away and start over again, because that's basically something that happens when you copy over stuff and um, don't know what you're doing. Okay. There will be easier examples then. Could we swap over to the slides, please? We will shut up in a few minutes now. We will give you a little bit of time to go and dig through the wiki and try yourself out. I think that is very important so you know where to start. And the point is, again, you're not alone. That is a very, very important message for this conference, right? There's, there's Johanna around. And please stand on the shoulders of those giants that are around in the Johanna and build stuff. There's the great unofficial flow site that has a lot of custom lightning components specific for flow use cases. Amazing stuff. Some of that stuff was built by customers and is now, has now been transported into the official release. Mm. That's how good they were. Explore Ohana. There is, as we already told you, a challenge with, okay, my flow uh, edited a value or uh, I edited a value on my record page. Now I need to refresh my flow. And that has been solved for you as well. Right, that did Douglas C. Ayers there uh, with a reloadable flower coupon. That's a little bit more code, not difficult code, but uh, you can take it and work it into our examples and you get a nice little refresh experience. And Salesforce obviously is constantly releasing new flow components. Yeah. The most amazing thing that will come over time is actually lightning web components for flows. Um, this will change a lot of the stuff that we talked about today. Um, for example, the, the necessity for this nasty appending stuff with this and breaking the whole sequence with that, as you saw before, um, will be going away if there's web components and a, more, uh, and a better way of modeling your, um, your HTML and CSS. You can, again, unofficial flow. There is no trailhead badge yet on those flow components, unfortunately. And we know that platform and web development is on the rise, which is also the reason why we thought about, about this scenario, because web development is getting pushed more and more into the platform. Lightning web components are basically web development, and we as admins or flow builders and so on can leverage that too. There's lots around, and so found on the internet is basically the motto, try it out, and now we will basically be open for your questions. If you want to try out the wiki, please do. If you hit any obstacles, please do. If you want to take it home with you, please do. These are our uh, Twitter handles. You can connect and contact us anytime with issues, even if you think, okay, I found this very, very beautiful thingy. It's off a tiny bit. Can you please help me fix it? Yes, we will, All right? So um, thank you so much. Have fun with your 10 minutes building on your own, and see you later. Exactly. Thank you. If you need our help, we're here. Any questions? Yeah. We have so. 
I um, will the request. question is, uh, why did we do this in a uh, in the dev console and not just put uh, pull the um, a flow component on the page? The um, answer is actually um, we um, in this flow component we are using a lightning component to surface things and make it look um, fancy, and therefore we had to uh, we created a. What we just did was creating and uh, editing this lightning component that is actually used in a flow. Um, we skipped the part that put the lightning component in the flow and the flow onto the page record uh, page. So um, we can go the, um, down that road step by step to, to show actually the sequence of things. Um, I'll just pass the microphone here and let Sandro explain where, how it works. Um, that's a bit more handy if I have my hands free and uh, typing is better and using the path components even better than. So while Daniel is showing us how the flow actually looks like in this case, uh, I'm not sure if I really understood the question because um, in order to get the signpost uh, displayed, um, we, we, how do I get this signpost into my flow? That, that's the question, right? So, and, and the way is that I first need to build an aura component in the way I did and wire it up into my flow. And the idea is that the data is provided by the flow, right? Like number of opportunities, for example, or number of overview opportunities. The data is crunched by the flow. And that's an easy way to use lightning or aura components on the one hand without too much code. That's another thing because um, if you were coding or a components, you would use something like Lightning Data Service or Apex code to get data into your component. Would we do away with all of this and say, you admins already know how to get data within flows. You know how to aggregate and loop over things and count high priority cases. And the idea is, okay, I've got a value now, um, like three high priority cases. I want to display it on a record page in a visual appealing way. And for the visual appealing way, we go to the internet, to CodePen, look what, what might fit, put it into the Aura component, rework it according to the wiki. As soon as the Aura component is done, we create a screen flow, we drag our created component onto the screen flow, and say our calculated value should now be ditched into the display value. Did that answer your question? We um, the, uh, the steps that we documented and didn't show uh, exactly live is we created a, st a thing in the, um, in the dev console. That was the, the step when we just stopped and switched back to presentation. Next, we, we want to surface this component and um, we just have a blank screen flow like this. It's just a flow that starts and loads something and brings that to the screen. So in that screen, we want to have that signpost. So let's see where the, um, it used to be there already. So we just go and add um, the signpost. So, and the most important thing is the flow output value here. That's basically where you, you aggregated data in your flow and now you push it into the component and the component is responsible for displaying it in a signpost as you just saw. So our thing was well done. We just typed in well done and the component displays well done. That, that's it. So this, um, now this is, the, now that we have prepared the, the screen flow that surfaces the component and now we can really drag um, the component onto the, the record layer, page layout. And then you're really right, it's just dragging that pre -prepare, uh, prepared thing on the record, configure what it should show, and there we are. And the cool thing is you can reuse this component all over the place, right? Mm -hmm. It's set up the way that you just inject your value there and it displays the value. It's very, very basic and simple, and that's the idea. You can, sometimes you want to just visualize some data points. We did huge constructs of workflows and formulas and so on to surface that in classic back in the time. Now we just do a few aggregations over flow and can already tell you on the opportunity that's the cases and for example, right? Because otherwise there's no direct connection between opportunities and open cases. You need to go over the account. Yeah. 
So in a more advanced, advanced uh, example, it could be even, uh, even a bit more tricky, like we go and find overdue opportunities, for example, and then decide, is there, is there any opportunity open at all? No. Then go for a screen that I just, just called blank and does exactly what the name says. It Nothing. is blank. So it gives the impression, um, so we could just see and hide this component uh, at the end of this path. But if there's something, we just count the items in the, um, that we found and pass the items to the, to the next screen. And in this screen, this is just another component that collects the data. And it has, um, has a few, um, few options to pass things in and out. For example, it takes a value um, called the counter and the total amount, which actually does what the name says. It, it takes the, the count of open opportunities and the total amount of the opportunities. And as soon as we run this thing on the, the wonderful Burlington Textiles Corp of America, universal containers of you broke all it. All fine. <laughs> it's uh, it's blank. Why is it blank actually? Even though there are op overdue opportunities, I the reason is um, we just um, it needs configuration on the side that you always uh, that you were already hinting at. And this is the way it goes. It. Here's the, um, on the right hand side, you see the configuration for the component. The signpost is already there and wonderfully formatted. Uh, it's, it looks really nice and sweet. And it needs something like a record ID. That's, uh, that's a, something I gave this flow to, um, to work with. I need a record ID of the page where I started. So we basically just check the box, save that thing, run through the routine of activating it again for. The purpose of just, removed it just all being safe. <laughs> and off we go back to Burlington Textiles Corps of America. You just deactivated the page. Oh no! Yes, you did. Oh no! And we need to close because we've got only one minute. Last time for question. Any questions? Find us. You can talk to us. You can Twitter to us. You can tweet to us. Uh, we'll be around. Thank you so much once again, and happy experimenting. <laughs>